Hey everyone, it's me. Welcome back to this week's episode of my Best Vintage Life podcast, coming to you live from my kitchen. I am here with my co-host, Art Bazarkanian, who made the effort to uh, record with me. I appreciate it. Sure. You pay me double today, right? I uh, made him some lunch. <laughs> double, double time. Double time. He claims my vegetables tasted weird. They were old. A little old. Yeah. Just iron gut here. <laughs> Expiration dates don't mean anything. Unless I happen to have that item. If she has it, oh no, it's good. But if I have it, I'm a, what is it? What was that? What was I? I don't, I'm just going to go right into my notes. If you want to email us, please do so. Admin at mybestvintagelifepodcast.com. That's admin short for administrator. Whoa. At mybestvintagelifepodcast.com. <laughs> what you drinking, a beer? Cali Squeeze, Blood Orange. Okay. That's our new sponsor. Thank you, Kathy, <laughs> Blood Orange, for sending I wish. one freaking can. Um, if you have any order questions, wholesale ordering questions, I ask that you please email them instead of using DMs on social media. Um, social media is more for us to interact, show you new stock, have fun. Yeah, she gets real pissy with the DM thing, so please do me a favor and email, and that way I can also see it. I mean, there's certain things you... DM about you have a laugh about a story you have a, a quick like little blip but you know asking no me I mean DM. I had someone message me on my personal Instagram and I was like okay this is I don't want to deal well, with this on here you know the drawbacks have started <laughs> <laughs> on social media TikTok Instagram at my best vintage life podcast all joking aside Art and I are you know kind of being funny and about the the DM thing, but we have a really good time on social media. Been a little little appreciate been a little light on there just because it was my birthday and I was trying to take a little break and it's summer and I'm just trying to not be so social media driven. So Yeah, it was nice not having to do three hundred takes of TikTok for the one approved by Bridget one. <laughs> wow. We got to get we got to get back on the wagon I think so. Back on the website my best vintage life my best bleh, my best vintage life podcast.com you can sign up our, for our newsletter for vintage resellers which will be going out this week. You can purchase mentor sessions, do a little shopping and um, read our wholesale FAQs there. Right now in our link in bio I have what I call the mega link which is all of our offerings of lots a lot of you partook partook i guess that's right in um purchasing I think that's a city vintage Korea. vintage lots denim shorts sophie shorts blank tees we're going to be doing long denim for the fall so thank you so much um for all of you who placed orders and we're just happy to see you succeed and do well with them and not have to worry so much about stock i hope i made it easy for you guys and uh long denim's coming i just made the announcement vintage raglan sweatshirts yes crew sweats skirts so keep your eye on the mega link it'll always be the first link in the link in bio Your one stop shop. <laughs> yes. That's what actually the slug of the URL, which is like slash whatever. Uh, the slug is, is, I think I made it mega link. Mega link. Which is not good for SEO. <laughs> sounds like very much like uh, one of those, uh, you know, monster car truck rallies. Yeah. Mega link. The greatest <laughs> truck of them all. <laughs> Rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Podchaser, please. We would love a new review or two or three or four. It's yeah, been a I'm long time. Of being aliases and saying how great we are. <laughs> no, <laughs> believe me, you can look at the dates. It's been a hot minute since we got one. And Art, I wish he had that much time. Um, obsession at the moment. Cali squeeze, blood orange. These things are so tasty, and they hit the spot. All right. Uh, I don't. It's a half of ice. I know. Uh, I don't really have one. What? What? How about those ice cream sandwiches? Oh, Fresno State ice cream sandwiches? Yeah. I was trying to think of a non-food one. Yeah, good luck with you. Um, yeah, so our local university has an amazing agriculture program, horticulture, agriculture. They are one of the only schools in the world that has a wine program, uh, own, own a, whatever it is. Oncology. Uh, no, yeah. not oncology. Not oncology. Own. I don't feel like looking it up. They can look it up if they want to know. But uh, they have their own farm store, which they have ice cream and meat and 
vegetables and and this is Fruits. like yeah, you Dairy. can just drive past. I drive past the cows every day. They have an equestrian program. They start horses there and they sell them. Um, but I had the most amazing ice cream sandwich, chocolate chip cookie sandwich. Like it put, you could taste how toxic the Nestle one is when I had that one because it was just so pure. Like you literally can see the cows it came from. It's so nice. Yeah. So, um, so we have three new patrons i only heard back from two of them and we have three ads so i have a lot to say um but topic wise we're talking about vintage karma today okay <laughs> do you want to do you want to start it off or do no. you want me to start it off please start it off Okay, so, you know, Art and I have been talking a lot lately just about vintage karma, and I know we did an episode on the not-so-nice side of vintage, and I think one way to remedy that is by, you know, doing things right by you and by your fellow resellers. Um, I think in the vintage world, we see so much paranoia and fear and... uh, I don't even know sometimes how to describe it. But for me, I I think it's really sad because we're not doing anything that serious. We're not operating on people. We're not saving lives. not saving lives. It's clothing. So the fact that so much fear gets like lodged into people's brains is it's really sad to me because at the end of the day, sometimes when you take a step back and you take a little break, it just sometimes you just need to walk away for a few days a week and then you see what you do and you're like you know what this is so much fun and i'm so lucky to be able to do something like this to make money whether it's your side hustle your full-time job maybe you pay a few bills with it maybe you pay for your whole family with it but you're you're working with such a beautiful product i mean for lack of better word that um it makes me sad that so many people get caught up in the the paranoia of it. What do you think? No, I I agree one hundred percent. You know, I think it's much easier to create a a community where people can be have like a mutualistic relationship where you can help each other source, you help each other sell by referring friends to each other's stores if you don't have something. Yeah. You know. Well, I'll give an example. Um Last weekend, I went out to dinner with client friends. I mean, some of the people I love the most here in California are my client friends. I wish they all lived in Fresno. Unfortunately, they don't, and I don't see them as much as I'd like. But uh, two people at the table, and then one person dropped by. I got to know all three of them from one other client, you know? And thankfully, that other client... And the other clients, like it's it's been like a chain reaction. They've been gracious enough, you know. That person was gracious enough to tell those people about us. And they literally, she brought them. Yeah, and I always say, I say to Art, you know, we have such a big warehouse, we have so much product. It's really rare that people walk away disappointed. If anything, people are like, "Shit, I'm spending too much money. I have too much stuff. I need to put stuff back." I mean, it. don't get me wrong. There have been times when I find a batch of things and it's like here and gone. You know, that's happened a lot with the lots this summer. I find like 20 cool colored shorts and someone buys them right away. Um, do we have a lot of that? Not necessarily. We find more as we cut, but we might not have more in that moment. But it's rare that someone comes and they can't find denim. It's rare that somebody comes and they can't find tees or sweatshirts or military it's or workwear. It's pretty much impossible. Now, I'm not saying everyone sources us. You might be listening to this and saying, oh, well, Bridget, what about this? What about that? I don't have you or I don't use you. Um, And and I I get that. But regardless, at the end of the day, no matter who or what your source is, it shouldn't be so serious and so scary that it's it's making you turn into this bad, Anxious. anxious person and like a shit person, you know? I mean... I think one story that sticks with me, and I won't say who, but I, you'll remember this, is one of our clients came, and I think it was her first time coming, and we were kind of talking about the area where her store was and all of her peers, and all of her peers were our clients, but yet they never once mentioned 
anything about us to her, whether she was having drinks with them, out with them, interacting with them, almost like we didn't even exist. And in moments when she said that she needed stuff, and to me, I was like, wow. And it was things that they didn't even need. Yeah. That's what. That, really, you remember who I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. distinctly because I just told me so much about that person's character. Oh, well, it was a few people actually. Yeah. And um, I just remember thinking that is so rotten. It is. But, it it you know, when you no no I know that and but like for me that sort of behavior it's just so weird to see in the fashion industry because <laughs> what we do at the end of the day at the end of the day is so silly compared to what some other people do for a living like we've added like an element of I don't know what to it people are acting like uh, so I don't know it's it's so bizarre to me I just. I can't believe that this ha- is, um, you know, where where we are, you know, and I don't, I don't think it applies to everybody. Obviously, no, 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 no. But, but I was just going to say, like, some people, their only source is their local thrift store. And I do get like, yeah, you there might be days when you get anxiety because you might not find things and then you might not be able to pay your bills. That totally makes sense to me. But for people that come to our warehouse to be like that, knowing how much stuff we have and how we can help other people, it just blows my mind. Yeah. I agree. So, I mean... It's not like there's one bin and you're digging in one bin and there's going to be 20 people at the same bin. You literally could have no, and we two, always, 300 people in there and, and they would not even bump into each other. We specifically try to only book one client per day. Sometimes, like, people, they come early and they're out, we'll book two. But ever since the pandemic, we've actively tried to only book one group of people a day. We're very careful about, like, our Japanese clients because a lot of them are very paranoid. Um, And I actually want to ask, I'm, you know, I think I mentioned that I'm learning Japanese. I want to ask one of our clients that we're very close with from Japan what their paranoia stems from. Because their paranoia is a little bit different than what I see with people selling in the U.S. So I've asked that question over the years because it's been going on from day one for me. And what it is is there's always the one piece or two pieces that you're hoping to find mm-hmm. when you go really far. So they're hoping to, to be able to get the best of the best. And the best of the best is something they're going to buy for anywhere from 500 to to 1000 and they're going to get two, 3000 So right away they can get a plane ticket back, a hotel So it's like that big home run. And they're always afraid that the Japanese or someone else got the home run before they did. Even though they can stock up on 100 doubles and triples, but they're more about that home run. uh, I do agree with you about the home run thing, but I see them act like that over regular stuff too. I wouldn't say it's just the big money stuff. Well, it's also the fact that like right now there's no – trend that everybody in japan is on right before with when they had Boone and all the magazines they knew exactly what to buy because when they brought it back home they were going to sell because that's what all the kids are looking for but now uh the youth in japan have so many other options so they get more scared so now there's only a few things in the vintage world that's coveted so they have to get to it first Mm. that's why you see them going straight to the swedish military the what was the other thing that was there all after oh lee everybody wanted lee slacks um those snow pants yeah oh the snow snow pants pants, the white wind pants snow pants been sitting for five years and all of a sudden within two months we sell like a couple thousand of them it's insane i bored you that bad no jesus mac and cheese Mac and cheese. Yeah, I'm okay. tired. Yeah. Oh, I just had a really no. <laughs> I just had a really good thought. Now I forget what I was going to say. Um, About karma. Well, no, I was just going to say like proactive things you can do. I suppose to 
to make sure that you're supporting your community. And I've seen this before, you know, at my old job where people like you're supposed to be working together and you end up working against each other. And it's just that we called it cannibalistic because you had this amazing group of people and you cannibalize everything and then you're left with what? Bones. Bones. And there's nothing when you have all these working brains and bodies and, um, you know, you got a full ship. And then you're left with one person in the lifeboat, you know? Imagine if you have all these other shops around you referring people to you because they know you are the specialist in the flair, you know, or the overall. Or yeah, something. I mean. And then you send anybody who's looking for really cool bandanas. Or I, I think that. this is like an especially important thing for people to practice if you're in an area where everybody's selling a bunch of different shit. Like. If you don't sell Western stuff, who cares? Share your source for cowboy boots with your Western reseller peer. Um, and if somebody's, if, if you are giving somebody information, maybe make it like an equal trade. Like, hey, I'll give you my source for this if you give me your source for that. Or that way you're both kind of winning. Or maybe like, hey, I'll take you with me when I go there. If you take, me with you okay, when you, you go there. You take me first. No, see, no. <laughs> see? That's, no, I'm, that's, I draw the line at, you know, I'm trying to come up with solutions with people who are still kind of like, uh, you know, maybe. Um, make it more of a friendly thing. I love that. You know, uh, quite a few of our clients, they come together, but they shop separately. And realistically, there's a few things here and there where they're like doing rock, paper, scissors. Who's going to buy it? Yeah. But not often. You know, it's like a, the intersection is like a Venn diagram. Yeah. And the intersection of some people is huge. Yeah. And some people it's very small. Try to seek out the one that your intersection is small because right. then, then you're like twice as strong. Yeah, like maybe maybe the only thing you guys have in common are like denim shorts and then everything else you sell a little bit differently. Oh, wow, big deal. And honestly, especially if you're like a basics buyer, it's really easy to sell the same thing as other people because what you're selling isn't, you know, unique. unique. It's just, it's not that it's not good. It's no, just, it's, it's basic. But you've curated it and that's yeah. what makes it. Yeah. special and just because you and someone three doors down both sell denim shorts doesn't mean that it's going to look the same on your your table where you have them or your mannequin or you know st styling suggestions you give people you really have to think about just because somebody sells the same thing as you doesn't mean that the um the cogs are turning the same way in the machine i used to think i used to say that at the rose bowl you know, people, a lot of people be like, oh, there's so many vendors here. Do you do you do okay? I said, yeah, but they're not me. Yeah. We all have pretty much the yeah. same stuff. Yeah, I mean. how you interact with the people, how you treat them. Uh, do you make your booth inviting? You know, just like what, you, what kind of environment are you creating in your store? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe Jenny, three doors down, has denim shorts, but. Um, You're not allowed to try them on. Yeah, or. Or when the customer goes to the dressing room, Jenny doesn't step in and say, hey, you know what? You might want to grab a few more pairs because it's, it's hard to find a good vintage fit. And then when you walk out of the dressing room, Jenny might not be there to say, oh, you know what? I think this will work better for you. Maybe Jenny wants nothing to do with clients or customers. Right. So just because Jenny's selling the same stuff as you doesn't mean Jenny's going to do better. Yeah. Jenny's not putting in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Jenny. That's like Jenny doll. Jenny, Jenny, friend. Yeah, I didn't remember that one. Jenny, friend, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to do some ad reads. Actually, our, I want you to do the ad oh, reads on, today. I yes. I want you, I'm going to make it big for you. I want you to be. Um, You're bossy. I'm bossy? Yeah. No, I'm going to make it even bigger. I'm not bossy. If you can't Hello. see this. Are you interested in the galactic prophylactic? Okay. No. Here's our first ad. You can read that. All right, start right here. Oh, man. Oak City Vintage is a community curated vintage shop in Oklahoma City, showcasing the best local vintage sellers and markets and apparel, accessories, and, and makers. What? Makers and apparel. What did I say? Mar markets. <laughs> Vintage sellers and makers in apparel, accessories, and home decor. 
Our goal is to create a joyful and easy shopping experience for our customers. We carry a variety of styles from dresses to blouses to tees and denim, all ranging from the 40s through the 90s. The shop strives to bring a -a one-of-a-kind shopping experience so you can feel good and, most importantly, look good while shopping, supporting, supporting local, well, supporting by shopping local businesses and keeping beautiful goods out of the landfill. Amen. New arrivals are added to the floor and website weekly, so there's always a chance to find... Oh, fuck. (laughs) Uh, Your next treasure. treasure. All right, now you have to read the website. Oak City. You keep moving that thing in my face. Oak City Vintage. microphone. Where do you want it? Listen. Oak. Let me tell you where to put Yeah, I was going to say, I shouldn't ask. Oak City Vintage OKC. OKC.com. Oak City Vintage OKC.com. Thank you for your patronage. I'm having so much fun with you doing these. You're going to read the next two. Oh, my Yeah. I feel like I'm in second grade. Yeah, I screw them up every time. Okay. All right. It's hey. Font. Are you thirsty? No. Three margaritas. No. Nope. Margarites. <laughs> Three margarites. Resellers of curated finds on eBay. I still go to them and look it out because I have it on my, saved on my favorites. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, Antique, vintage, contemporary, hand smock dresses on Sunday mornings, pearl snap shirts in the same dance hall where Grandpa Joe waltz granny, a Shetland wool sweater keeps you cozy around the campfire, chicken soup, and the price is right under an heirloom afghan. We hope you find these memories and more in our eBay store. Three Marguerites gladly ships overseas purchases through the eBay Global Shipping Program. That's great. Thank you. You can visit Three Marguerites at ebay.com slash str slash three Marguerites, M-A-R-G-U-E-R-I-T-E-S. Thank you for your patronage. And last but certainly not least. No, come on. Blues Brothers. No. <laughs> Elwood Vintage. There you go. Was opened in 2016. With I have a dream. With three a dream. with a dream. Three t shirts. Six years later, Elwood Vintage has that perfect piece for every occasion. Put on an Elwood Vintage tea and hear the loud guitars shrieking. Screaming. They don't scream, they shriek. Okay. Feel the drums beating. And you're singing your heart out at your fav- favorite eighties rock concert. We have that buttersoft biker tea that will take you back to your first motorcycle ride with that wind in your hair with zero f's given and a couple bugs in your teeth visit elwoodvintage.com don't forget about that perfect crisp pair of vintage jeans to jump into in the morning when you buy vintage you are buying more than the clothes you are buying the memory that somebody else had and the good vibes that come with it elwood vintage wear them till they melt off thank you art so good news, uh, we have... <laughs> yeah, good news, he's not doing any more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have um, three new patrons, except I didn't hear back from the third one, but the other two I did. So first off, we're going to give a shout out to... Oh, shit. Wait, let me make sure I'm spelling it. Yes. All right, I. it's right there in the email. To Catalog Vintage, that's at Catalog Vintage, C-A-T-L-O-G Vintage. Um, so they've been listening for a long time and, um, you know, that's their, their handle is catalog vintage and there is a burning question for art here. Really? So thank you so much for your patronage and here you go, art. Thank you, Ashley. For buying trips, do you have any tips as far as shipping is concerned? I'm in Seattle and doing a solo buying trip at a vintage warehouse on the East coast next month. What is the most effective way to ship a large order? USPS, no, FedEx, UPS, et cetera. Any insight would be greatly appreciated. So our shipping tips for Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Okay. So it all depends on how much stuff you're going to be shipping back. Um, If you have a forklift, a pallet jack where you're at, then I would suggest freight. 
but most likely you don't. Uh, so what I always do, regardless of I know I'm going to be shipping back things that way and I need certain things faster, I pre-print labels with me. I already know where I'm going. And I usually always use UPS. Um, it's super easy. And most businesses have pickup anyway, so I don't have to lug it around. Uh, so what I would do is print your labels from the East Coast warehouse address going back to your place in Seattle. That is 100% the best way. Now, I suggest opening accounts with FedEx and UPS. They don't charge you anything for it, but you'll get discounts off like a normal person just going into the website. So that always helps. They'll knock off about 19 to 20% for you. Or if you get a ShipStation account right now, I'm getting really amazing UPS ground rates. ShipStation, you, there's a lot of great coupons and they even have a trial. I think mine was like three months for free. And then after that, it's $29. Yeah, but never, never, never. USPS. No. That's just, that's they're like, great for orders that little, you're shipping. Guys. Correct. But never like 40 pound, 50 pound stuff. Yeah. Or you could just uh, fly direct from Seattle to Fresno and come to Baz and save yourself a lot of money. <laughs> there must be a reason why you're going to the East Coast, I'm assuming. Well, I commend her for that. I'm, yeah, I'm curious what where, yeah. where she's going I because uh, some of them on the East Coast are... You've been to pretty much all of them. Uh-huh. So. Questionable. So I'm curious, Ashley, if you don't mind sharing uh, where you're going. And thank you. Thank you. All right. We have one more patron question. There's one for me and for you. Oh. Just a reminder that we do have our patron program. It's patron.podbean.com slash my best vintage life podcast. We have three tiers and um, any patronage is appreciated. Our lowest level is the $5 level, which is a real bargain. That's $60 a year, $5 a month. You get an on-air shout out like we just did, and you also get to ask Art a burning question on air, or maybe if you want to ask me one too. I just figure Art has more wisdom. And you get two bonus episodes a month. Right now, we just hit 30 bonus episodes. So that's 30 episodes for you to listen to if you're not sick of us. A lot of them are just me. Uh, but it's a cool catalog, and I have a lot more fun with them. I, I probably say things I wouldn't say publicly sometimes. Um, so check it out. I think there's a lot of useful information in there. And if you want to advertise like the three ads that aren't just so eloquently read, you can do so for $20 a month. That's our ad level. You get all the access to the bonus episodes, and you also get an ad read aloud on the podcast 30 to 60 seconds twice a month because we do buy – you know, we're, we're every two weeks, our podcast. Then we also have a $25 um, mentor level. You get access to the bonus episodes, all the same benefits of the $5 level, and we do text mentoring via the Nudge app. So those are all there for you if you're ready to take the next step in supporting the podcast monetarily. Um, personally, you know, if you want to just dabble, I think the $5 level is great if you want to get access to those bonus episodes. And someone had asked me, about accessing those. So the only way you can access them is through the Podbean app. I know that's a pain. Um, Patreon, do, Patreon does things a little bit differently, but the nice thing about the Podbean app is they don't take away as much money from me. Um, you know, something to keep in mind, not just when you're supporting this podcast, but other ones, especially Patreon ones, they take a large chunk, like a $5 p- pledge can sometimes be like $3. I think with pay, with Podbean, I get four twenty five. I think they take seventy five cents. So just something to keep in mind. It's not even a gallon of gas, man. <laughs> I know. Um, it's just better for me to do it through Podbean, in my opinion. And yeah, it's another app you have to download. But if you're worried about that, then delete one you haven't used in a long time. So yes, you can only use it through the Podbean or listen to the episodes through the Podbean app. All right, this is um, from a longtime pod listener, Desiree. Um, she joined the patron program this week. And um, Thank you, Desiree. yeah, she's actually opening up a little brick and mortar spot in Columbia, Tennessee. It's 45 minutes south of Nashville. Her business is called Electrical Banana. Um, so hopefully one day she can get a store in Nashville. But for now, she's doing what she can. And I think that's commendable. Uh, so, Art, here's your burning question. Uh, And it's at Electrical Banana Vintage. Uh, Hi, Art. Thank you for taking the time to do this amazing podcast and answer my question. I've heard with a I've heard from a few other vintage sellers that it is better for sales and the customer experience not to engage with the customer at pop ups because it makes them feel pressured to buy something. 
I am very much a hello. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for coming, kind of shop owner. But it got me thinking, and now I'm curious if this is not the best approach. Please let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much. I think it's subjective, huh? It, you know, like part of... Oh, that's... What was that? Azzy, no! <laughs> You want to pause this? No, keep talking. <laughs> it's your question. Okay. So to me, it comes down to like reading the person. You know, you can't just have the same oh MO. <laughs> you can't have the same MO or act the same way towards everybody because some people are more receptive, more uh, want more help, need more help. And others are actually going to look and find what they want and then they'll ask questions. So I think you have to approach it with. Very open mind. Just be kind. And a smile sometimes goes a lot further than about 40 words. So just smile and make yourself, you know, have good energy. And people want to spend more time there if they don't see you annoyed, pissed off, or somehow they're not looking at the racks the way you want them to. Or, you know, because some people scowl when you go into their store and you're like, shoot, I don't want to be here. You know, you kind of get out of the pop-up space. And so I think... I think it's it's a blend of doing what's comfortable for you and what each person's going to look different in terms of if you can approach them or not right yeah yeah and i mean you got to read the approachability but at the same time i was very much like her i was i would smile hey how's it going and and i could tell if someone is looking around as opposed to looking the difference if they're looking around that's when i would jump in and say hey Is there something specific you're looking for? Uh But if I saw them actually looking through something, I'd let them be. Yeah, let them work at their own pace. Yeah, 100%. And then, hey, just let me know if you need prices. Yeah. Because, you know, not everything was tagged. It's such an experimental thing. 100%. 100%. But I think, like, and she's right. You know, I I think it's annoying when people come right away. And then all of a sudden the next person comes up and tells you, can I help you put that? Can you? I was like, come on, man. I'm not at the Gap or Old Navy. Leave me alone. I just want to do my thing. Oh, her store will be in the Columbia Arts Building if you're interested or in Tennessee. Um, it's a great spot for a day trip from Nashville. It's 45 minutes south. Oh, yeah, that's cool. She's yeah. going to get all kinds of college kids coming down. Okay, well, good. I don't know much about that area. I'm glad you do. Oh, there's so many universities. <clears throat> this is my question. Hi, Bridget. Congrats on your new home. I look forward to seeing the progress. It is so inspiring. Well, thank you. Everything inside is just about done now and outside too. So it's just one big last very expensive project that I've been putting off. We'll see how that goes. So thank you. I appreciate that. For right now, I need to get my ass up there and enjoy it, which is the whole purpose. Uh, her question for me. I... Is art someone so brilliant as art? <laughs> no. I'm reading it. How come I'm not reading it? Oh, Okay. Uh huh. I read on a vintage blog that one of the worst things you can do is to invest a lot of your money in your items. They called it business suicide. She said you should pay as little as possible for your items and never more than $20 ever. On the contrary, I know, I'm already like, mm. on the contrary, I know sellers who pay a lot for their inventory and don't mind taking that gamble. What are your thoughts when buying inventory? Thanks a bunch. Um, so once again, I think this is very subjective. Some people live in areas where they can find items for one to ten dollars all day long, all week long, all month long. And if they can get by and be successful with that, then that's great for them. Not everybody is that lucky. Um but at and, the same time, what are they selling for? Right. That's that's what you have to see. It's like yeah. the person that posted on the blog is only selling. I think that's items. such like a harsh term, business suicide. Oh, like horrible. I mean, no. No, 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 no. no. Like, okay, I mean, think about how I'm many times... Buckets. The price buckets our customers have. Yeah. And there have been customers where there's not a single thing under $20. Yeah. And it goes from 20 all the way up to two, $300. But they know that they're going to sell it based on your shop. So you have to see what your price targets and price points are in your own store. And then do that retail math class and you'll see what you need to pay for things. Well, I was just going to say, you know... 
you're not always going to have the same markup. Like that's just impossible. Sometimes you are going to have to buy things for a little bit more and sell it for a little bit less and make a little bit less. But sometimes you need to do that to have a wowzer piece in your collection. Yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe sometimes you're working on a 70 to 80% IMU and other times you're at 40 to 50, but that 40 to 50% item might be what pulls a person into your booth at a pop-up or into your store versus the one next to it because you had an amazing item. Like sometimes you have to make a little sacrifice in that sense. Perfect uh, Thursday, I bought a pair of pants for 400 bucks i'll probably sell it for 450 to 500 right it's a cool piece to have yeah. so you're making 50 to 100 dollars. yeah and you're but it's totally fine with that 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. not everything you're gonna double triple whatever I, sometimes it's just good to have a piece like that i'm one of those people as long as i made the money back that i spent and i made some kind of profit i'm typically happy i mean think about like when i moved last year into this home yeah I sold a lot of furniture. Some furniture, I made back what I spent and I was happy because my taste changed and I thought, God, how lucky am I to be able to make back the money that I spent? Some stuff I sold for a little bit more and was shocked that I got more. Some stuff I had a loss. It it does balance itself out. And if it's not balancing itself out, then you're doing something wrong. I think the most important question that you can ask yourself and disregard those idiotic blogs, please, because... They'll limit you and they will give you the wrong information. Ask yourself what your budget is. Okay. So when you have your budget for your store, you got your rent, you've got your utilities, and there should be a certain percentage that's allocated just for inventory. And now what you want to do is you want to take that, utilize it, see what that generates you. Once you do that for a couple months, you'll see that if you're spending too much on inventory or too little. You, and it's going to be a sliding thing because there's seasonality to things. You know, right now, we're, July is usually the slowest month for a lot of vintage people in all retail. So gauge it. I've got a wonderful, amazing client who will only come back to the warehouse once she has sold exactly what she spent. Like, so let's say she spends $2,000 and takes back a bunch of stuff to her shop. She'll only come back if she has made her 2000 back, plus obviously... She'll still have more inventory, but that's how she's disciplined herself. She won't go spend more unless she's she recoups that initial investment, which I think is great discipline, and it works for her. So, you know, you've got some options. Set yourself like a, a budget, like you would of a house, and see how what how much money you have to play with. Yeah, it's going to be different for everyone. Right. Some people can't afford things that are twenty dollars. So, in that sense, I do agree with what they said. But absolutely not. But it's horrible. Get out of the business if you cannot buy something for more than twenty dollars. Honestly. Well, some people when they're just starting, it might be it might not be that they can't. It's that they don't have the maybe they don't have the confidence to say yes, I can do this. Then get out of the business. That's a little harsh. Is it? I think so. Life is harsh. <laughs> okay. You swim or you sink. <laughs> we had one other um, patron join. That should be a motivational um, Their name is Estef, and their business is at Mer- Mercurial Digs, M-E-R-C-U-R-I-A-L-D-I-G-S. Estef, I have not heard back from you yet, um, so if you get a chance and you have a burning question for art, please just let me know, and we can uh, get your question on the next episode. But thank you so much for your patronage to all three of you. She just emailed. I don't want to ask Art anything. He is rude. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Bridget. (laughs) No, we did not get an email. That was false. Anyways, um, do you have anything you wanted to add about the vintage karma thing? Yes. Spread good karma, not negative, paranoid, anxious karma. Your mental health deserves to be happy. And that's how you are. Do a good deed. I mean, honestly, some of the most paranoid people in this business that I've gotten to know through my work in the business and art's work and what art has told me, they're some of the most miserable people. Oh, absolutely. Like 100 percent I mean, there's I've never seen them laugh. I mean, the people I had at dinner with me last week were some of my favorite people on the planet. You know, they come, they have fun, they're lighthearted. It's just not a big deal. It is a big deal, but it isn't, you know? Yeah. Here's one of the things I've lived by for a long time in all my businesses I've done. There's plenty of meat on a bone for everybody. Yeah. Share. Yeah. You know? Right. 
Words by Jack Handy. <laughs> Share the bone. No, I mean, just... Just be nice, and... And nice things will happen to you. It might not be by that person. Right. And if you truly believe in karma, yeah. it will come your way. That's the whole... And person. if you get shit on for some reason, then you know what? Let karma deal with them hey, in its own way. And well, you keep being nice. That's right. And I'll only get shit on one time by that one person. Do not be shit on twice by the same person. Shat. Shat? No, I just I Shard? like saying shat. Is it sharded? Shat? <laughs> Shitted? <laughs> shit on? A shard is a shit and a fart. What? Yeah. Come on, man. You're making up words now. No, shards. Sharticles. Is that a Pennsylvania thing? No. Sharticles? Yeah. Sharticles in California? <laughs> like you have sharticles you in your underwear. Particles, not sharticles. What? Californians aren't cool enough for sharticles, I guess. No. All right. On that that's, note, that's I'm... Coal mine stuff. I'm leaving. Pennsylvania coal mine. I'm leaving now. In the meantime, stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind, and don't be basic. Bye. Bye.